Here's the problem we want to solve. We have a charged rod or a charged line of a given length and a given total charge, and we want to determine the electric field at a point P down below the rod. So nothing is located at point P, but we want to determine the electric field at that location. The first thing I want to do before I start doing any math, any integrals, is I want to get an idea of what I expect the answer to look like. I'm going to break my line into three pieces. So there's a segment to the left of P, an equal length segment to the right of P, and then everything else left of the rod. For every point to the left of P on the rod, there's a symmetric point to the right of P whose electric field contributions drawn here, their vertical components will add together, but their horizontal components will cancel out. So for this little segment of rod here, I can see that the left and right components will cancel out. However, I still have this whole length of rod to the right, which will also contribute to the electric field at point P. There we get additional Y components and no cancellation of the X components. So overall, every point on the rod will add a downward component to the electric field at point P. And this segment of the rod will add a leftward component to the electric field at point P. So overall, I expect the net electric field due to the charged rod at point P to look something like this. This gives me an idea of what the answer should look like, and it's important because I can see now from this sketch that my electric field will have both X and Y components. Now the really important idea here is that I'm going to need separate integrals for the X component and the Y component. Now, an integral is just a way of adding up a whole bunch of contributions, and we already learned in Physics 1 that when you add vectors, you add X components to X components and Y components to Y components. You can't add an X component to a Y component. That's why we need two separate integrals. We have an X integral that will add up all the X component contributions and a separate Y integral that will add up all the Y component contributions. So let's get those integrals. The first thing I'm going to do is set my origin. If P is below the rod or above the rod somewhere, I'm going to set my origin lined up with point P. That will make the math come out most easily, and we'll come back to that once we set the integral up. Here we have an expression that says a tiny charge contribution, dq, will give me a tiny contribution to the electric field equal to k times dq over r squared. I'm going to write my tiny bit of charge, dq, times a linear charge density, times a little bit of length. In our class, we're going to focus on uniformly charged rods, in which case the charge density is just the total charge divided by the total length of the rod. We have those numbers in this problem, so we can get a value for lambda. And then I'm going to go back to this expression and replace dq with k times lambda. Next, what I need to do is start figuring out how the x and y components relate to the overall electric field and figure out my expression r. So I'm going to pick a random point on my rod here and think about the contribution from just this little point. So this little segment of the rod I can think of as a dq, and this point will give me a small contribution to the overall electric field, which I write de. Now, this is a vector pointing at an angle, so of course we're going to break that into components. And I'm going to make two triangles here. And this is the sort of meatiest part of this problem, is recognizing these two separate triangles and how to use them. So I have an electric field triangle here that relates DE to its X component and its Y component. We can also see that triangle drawn up here. And then I have the analogous triangle in terms of lengths. So looking up here, in our original diagram, the length of this top side of the triangle is my coordinate x. The length of this vertical side of the triangle is how far p is below the rod. And the length of the hypotenuse is r, my distance from dq to point p, which we can write using the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got two triangles. They're right triangles, so of course I'm going to try and use SOHCAHTOA. And I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA on each of these individual triangles. So on the left, I can say that cosine theta equals the adjacent side, dex, 
divided by the hypotenuse, DE. For the right triangle, I can also say that cosine theta equals x divided by r. Similarly, I can write sine theta as the opposite, DEY divided by hypotenuse, DE, and as 0.3 divided by r. Take a minute and soak this in because this is uh, a big piece of solving a problem like this, is constructing these triangles and recognizing that I need two triangles to ultimately write my components in terms of lengths. So I'm going to start setting up my integrals now. So dex, I have figured out, is de times cosine theta. So that's what I have here. I stick in a minus sign, because if you look at this charge element here, the x component is pointing in the negative x direction. So that's my minus sign. If I forgot that, I could always assign the direction at the end of the problem, because I know what direction my electric field should point in overall. But I'll put it in for good measure. And I've also put in integral limits here. I want to integrate over the entire length of my rod. So based on where my origin is, my rod starts at negative 0.4 meters and ends at 0.8 meters. So those are my integration limits. Next thing I want to do is replace DE. So we said at the beginning that DE was k lambda dx divided by r squared. So I've plugged that in. Next thing I'm going to do is replace cosine theta with its expression in terms of x and r. k and lambda are constants in this problem, so I can go ahead and pull them outside the integral. I've got an x, and I'm integrating over x, so that's good. But I need to replace r, so my last step, I'm going to plug in my Pythagorean theorem, my Pythagorean theorem expression for r. And this is the integral I end up with that I need to evaluate. This integral is not especially uh, challenging, but if I don't feel like flexing my calculus muscles, I can always ask Wolfram Alpha to do it for me. So here I left off the k times lambda and just did the integral piece. Wolfram Alpha tells me what I get. So I can then multiply that by k lambda, and I get an x component of the electric field at point P of negative 24,639 newtons per coulomb. Uh, and if, if you are working this out on your own, it is worth it to stop, think through the units that you get when you carry out this integral, and actually check that the units do work out to be newtons per coulomb. Uh, at this point, you should pause the video for a minute and try to think about, try to figure out what will this expression look like for the y component of the, of the electric field. What will it look like at each step as we plug in the expressions we figured out? So pause and think about that, then we'll see what we get. So here's our expression for EY. Stepping through it, I've got a minus sign again, because every point on this rod contributes an electric field pointing down at point P, so there's my minus sign. EY is sine theta times DE, so I've got my sine theta here instead of cosine theta. And notice the exact same integral limits as before. Even though I'm looking at the Y component, I'm still going to integrate over x. I'm still adding up the contribution from every point along my charged rod, and so I'm still integrating over the charged rod here. Exact same integral limits. Replace dE with k lambda dx over r squared. Replace sine theta with 0.3 divided by r. Replace r with our Pythagorean theorem expression, and this is the final integral that I need to evaluate. I can either do it by hand or by Wolfram Alpha, and I come up with negative 171,896 newtons per coulomb. Uh, and let me actually go back to the x component for a moment. There's something I wanted to point out. I said that it's best to put your origin lined up with point P here. If we look at the integral we come up with here, if x is positive, then this whole expression will come out to be negative meaning every point over here at positive x will give me a x component of the electric field pointing in the negative direction. That makes sense. If x is negative here, then this whole expression will come out to be positive, 
meaning every point over here gives me an x component that points in the positive direction. That makes sense. So that's why we put the origin lined up with point p, so that that cancellation between negative and positive components will work out very nicely for us, will come out naturally. So we found the ex component, we found the ey component. I'm going to compare that to my expectation at the beginning. So here's what I expected the answer to look like. I get a negative x component, a negative y component. That looks good. My y component is larger in magnitude than my x component. That looks good, right? Every point on the line adds up y components, but we get some partially can partial cancelization in the x components. So the x contribution is smaller than the y contribution. And if I want to know the overall magnitude of the electric field, I can do that with the Pythagorean theorem just like I would for any vector. There's nothing different about the electric field. It's a vector, and we find the magnitude the exact same way. So let's summarize the steps we went through for this problem. So we started out sketching the approximate direction of the electric field, and there we're looking at any cancellation, either a complete cancellation or a partial cancellation like we had in this, this uh, problem for one of the components of the electric field. And we're figuring out, do I need both x and y components of the electric field, or might one of them, might I luck out and one of them will completely cancel and be zero. We set our origin next. We line it up with point P so that any cancelization that happens uh, for points to the left or the right of P, points above or below P, will work out naturally for us. We determine our linear charge density lambda, and we replace dQ with lambda times dx. Next, we had to sketch our two triangles. So one is an electric field triangle relating the x and y components. The other is a triangle in terms of physical lengths relating our horizontal and vertical lengths, as well as our overall distance between that point on the rod and our point of interest, R. We use SOKOTOA to relate the components of our electric field. We use SOKOTOA a second time to write sine theta and cosine theta in terms of lengths, because that's ultimately what we're going to integrate over, is a length variable. We set the integral limits for both of our integrals. In both cases, we're integrating over the charged rod, so it doesn't matter which component I'm looking at. My integral limits are going to be the same. They're going to go from one end of the rod to the other. And then finally, I'm going to evaluate those integrals, either by hand or with the help of a computer program. And I'm going to compare my result back to what I was expecting in step one. So if the directions are off, I'll notice if I missed a minus sign somewhere, if I expect the y component to be bigger, and somehow my math tells me the x component is bigger, I can look and see uh, if I missed something somewhere in my expression. Uh, also, checking units is always something we want to do at the end of a problem, make sure our units actually work out when we multiply all the terms together.